Yeah, so what I want to do is talk about how I create inserts. And I'll usually start with just a regular plane. And what I want to do is, is I'm going to actually, even though I've put a little uh, 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 cube on top of that, I want to actually extrude that plane because I want something for that cube to cut into. And in fact, it's a cylinder. And I just merged all the vertices, make sure that I get this little bullet shape. And uh, I'll take that and extrude it down, and then I'll make sure that it's facing the right directions, shift in, select everything, shift in. Make sure that we're facing the right directions, especially with the new booleans. It's really important that we face the right direction. So now that we've got that basically cut out, we're going to go in, and we want to auto-smooth all of the faces there. And I'll just start crafting out this geometry that I want. And... Uh, I only need to do half of it, and I'll use symmetrize later on. So I get something that, that I like, move it down, take a look at it, and I need to sharpen that edge right there so it stays sharp. And then I'll just start adding <clears throat> some more little details. And these, again, are little inserts that are coming directly from uh, within uh, KitOps. <clears throat> We're using the Design Magic K-Pack to do this, and again, just, you know, grabbing different parts and using it from that K-Pack to create the shape that I want. This particular shape is actually something from one of Vitaly Bulgarov's uh, designs, I think. It's something similar to this that I kind of liked. And so I basically symmetrize it, make sure that I get everything right. And then I'll go to the bottom corners here and I'll delete the four corners. And so I just want that top surface. And now I'll move all these outside vertices in close, extrude them up, and then hit F for fill, and then shift N to actually make sure that all the normals are facing the correct direction. And then once I've got that done, and I'm looking at this, moving it directly on the zero axis, and uh, I'll go ahead and do a render. Notice that right there, that top face is still gray. That means it's actually intersecting the top of the plane. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that face down just go into vertex mode, grab all these, and all those, and all those, and then just move the whole thing down just a little bit. And then I'll usually do a control A, all transforms, and that makes sure that the actual center is at X zero, Y zero, Z zero. Uh, that's an important part of this, just to make sure that we're always got the center. So now I've got that, and you can see that we've got this very quick insert. I've saved it. Move the camera to insert, take a picture, save the thumbnail, and really that's it. And then we start all over again. And uh, I'm using the SY cutter, which is uh, one of the free materials uh, from the KitOps collections. And I always create any of my cutters with the SY cutter. So here I'm doing a different one. I'm going to actually create a uh, uh, this hex insert that I've pulled in, and I want to create a uh, an array of these. I'm going to actually make a vent, make a vent pattern. And so I'll just play around with the numbers until I see, see something I like. I get half of it done, then I mirror it, and then I bisect the mirror so I can get, you know, uh, get it centered correctly. And then I'll take the next piece and, and do that. And you can see that we have to get that perfect. It's a little bit of a challenge. But we're doing that all again uh, programmatically using modifiers. And uh, this way we can actually change this as we make this insert and someone uses it they can actually add to the array and, and and change it so that's kind of a nice way of doing it and again we'll add another array modifier and we'll do it in the opposite direction you see or i'm sorry in the same direction and then you know at that point we just need to oh actually in this case we convert it all to mesh i guess we didn't leave it as parametric um but uh, once we've done that, a control A is going to center that again to the center. Make sure that everything is, the faces are facing correctly, which they just did. We fixed the normals on it. And then control A, all transforms. And you'll see that it moved it to the right spot for us. And now all we need to do is render out the uh, thumbnail, and save the insert, render out the thumbnail, and, and that one's complete. So I was looking at one of Vitaly's uh, kit bashing objects, and I thought, you know, I know how he created that. He created it in Moi 3D, and I've used Moi quite a bit in the past. Actually, before Blender, I 
used it for almost everything. And uh, I thought, can I do that in Blender? I wonder if I could. And so what I did is I thought, okay, let's try and and see what we can do. And this got me thinking about creating a K-Pack, and what I'm calling Design Magic. And that's just a part of it that you're seeing right there. And what I'm doing is I'm just creating these little inserts that I can just drag in here and change. And see, I can just shift D, duplicate them, change the size, you know, adjust the, the, the parameters. And in fact, the actual ones have things like uh, this bevel that we're seeing, this inverting bevel that we're going to be doing right here. That's already built into the into the actual inserts. So all you gotta do is turn on a modifier and it's got that inverted bevel. So you can start to see that that uh, as I start to build this, and uh, one of the things that Vitaly does, he always uses an axis of symmetry or two. A lot of times it's two axes of symmetry, but uh, this one is just, it's just using the uh, X axis of symmetry. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just basically doing the same thing. I just keep adding inserts. And as I add inserts, I'm creating more and more geometry and I drag them around, make sure that they're going to work correctly. And sometimes I have to use the exact modifier, especially something like this, where, where it's actually having to match perfectly. So I use the exact mod, uh, exact Boolean, uh, modifier so that make sure I get it exactly right. And so, and, uh, since this is the first time I really tried doing this, I got kind of got a kick out of, uh, just playing around with it a little bit, seeing how accurate I could get. Um, and, uh, as you can see, uh, this workflow using inserts is a little bit like box cutter, maybe. Uh, maybe it's a little simpler in some ways in the sense that it's just uh, not very, uh, uh, I mean, it's very intuitive. You, there's, no, there's no, nothing really to learn about it, right? This is, a, this is one that you can actually just <laughs> change the different, as a cutter, you just change the parting lines and you change the angles that you want them on and it'll just actually just creates it for you. So. Uh, and there's a vent one, as you can see in the right up right, we have a vent uh, one as well. And I'm just, you know, cutting out some of the back pieces of this. Actually, I've, I've actually uh, added one that'll do that chamfer cut now um, already. And then I did notice that some of the geometry that he had, actually, there wasn't an easy way to do that in a, using modifiers. So I just had to actually go into the actual geometry itself and play with it. Uh, and get it so that it's correct. And then I can go ahead and add bevels and things like that to it, uh, to the direct geometry. And then once I tab out of that, I still have all my cutters that I'm working with. Shift D to duplicate my parting line cutter. And I can just, again, just move those around, move those points around. I can always, always uh, duplicate points on there by just selecting two points and subdividing it. And uh, you start to see I'm just, you know, adding some, some of the last details in, in terms of the, the geometry and um, kind of work from big to small, starting with larger objects and elements and working into the smaller elements and then, uh, you know, keep playing around, trying to come up with uh, uh, maybe a detail too that are going to work correctly. These are just, again, shift duplicating, shift D duplicating these little, these little holes, little rivet holes. Uh, and same thing with the cube. We can just create these cubes and scale them all day long and rotate them. And as we do, we're just cutting into the object wherever we want to put them. So there we have it. Adding a few more holes. We might, uh, at this point, I think we're going to want to go ahead and, you know, we can, we can convert it to a mesh if we want to. Um, yeah. And uh, we can continue to edit, like add add some bevels on things that would be harder. But but for the most part, you can see that you know, adding event it, it works. The workflow is actually pretty darn fast and works pretty good. So uh, this was a uh, uh, interesting study for me and something that I uh, actually enjoyed playing around with quite a bit um, and learned learned a lot from it. Not only do I learn a lot about how to better model with kit ops also actually you know sometimes modeling somebody else's designs helps you understand what they were thinking especially in this case where you have someone who was thinking of was working with a, a nerbs based spline cad modeler and here we are doing the same kinds of things in blender so it's an interesting that's an interesting challenge now there's some things like there's some areas that are going to be really hard to work with which um uh in particularly filleting, you know, a solids modeler like Moe or Rhino or 
or Fusion 360 does a really good job of filleting. And of course, blenders, uh, chamfers, and bevels have gotten so much better, but they're still not quite as good as a true solid modeler. Uh, and uh, just the way it is. So, so sometimes if you're going to bevel stuff, you're going to have to manually go in and hand bevel it uh, to get the actual thing that you want uh, perfectly. So uh, it's just one of those one of those things. Uh, here we are. I'm just adding some KidOps uh, EV material system textures to things and just setting up a render. I'm going to probably add a little uh, decal here at the end. But you're getting the idea that this is a, a kind of a, a cool little object, cool little product that I was able to uh, quickly knock out and learn a little bit about Vitaly's design process as well as my own uh, modeling process using KidOps. So hopefully I uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it's something that, that uh, uh, you thought is worthwhile. Uh, and stay tuned for that Design Magic K-Pack. It should be up soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.